FNN。Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight, or internationally at seven two seven four four five one zero four four. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX. As you can see, it's up here at this level. This is a 61% retracement on the daily. Whether it's going to break through or not, we'll have to uh, wait and see. The next one that's very interesting uh, from a technical perspective, of course, is the FTSE, which is the UK market. You'll notice that uh, we've made a ABC to the upside. We gapped down today. And it looks like we're we're heading for lower prices uh, in the FTSE. Whether that's related to anything uh, related to Brexit, it's not even the news anymore. So it's uh, <laughs> it's getting a little passe, I guess. They need something else to beat on. Uh, we'll uh, take a look here at Bitcoin. We've had a quick couple questions about Bitcoin. We don't trade it, but we do watch it. And uh, what we're looking here in the Bitcoin is you'll see that big bottom that we made down there. Uh, remember the long-term ABCD on Bitcoin. This was going back to when it was trading at the 19,000 level back in January of last year. That came in at around 3,800. We got down to uh, 3,100. Then we went sideways, of course, all during December, January, February, and March. And then March, we started the breakout. We got up uh, to that 5,600 level, and now we're looking at a potential pullback here near those old highs at around 4,500 in the Bitcoin if we get that now. This is all about uh, blockchain technology, I understand. I don't know if it's about cryptocurrencies, but uh, something big is happening there, folks. The big banks are involved in it. And so that means uh, something is going on that probably means uh, we ought to pay attention to it. Unfortunately, however, it's far beyond my pay grade, the technicality of, of this stuff. It's just amazing that someone came up with this. Uh, this guy, whoever his name was, Satoshi Yakamura or whatever it was, uh, he must have been a, a true genius. Uh, let's look at a couple things that we've had a questions about. One here is General Electric. It's strong this morning due to earnings. And if you'll give me one second here, we will take a quick look at General Electric. And we'll be able to show you what we're looking at here. Yeah, they'll find another way of taking it, Doc, uh, Dollar Bill. You can flat out agree with that. They Negative interest rates weren't enough, so now they got to figure out some way uh, to get around this, but we'll make it this. But if you, most of the world, folks, you know, China, I don't know if you folks know this or not, but China is nearly a cashless society now. Everybody pays with their iPhones or telephones. They just put it up, and whether it's Starbucks or uh, department stores, whatever it happens to be, it's pretty much a cashless society. We see some of that in Hong Kong. We see some of it in the United States, but in the UK, you know, there's a, a whole lot. Uh, everything is done by electronic payment. I think 80, 85 percent, virtually nobody carries cash anymore. So hopefully the internet won't go down and we'll all be okay, but who knows? One other thing, folks, let me just explain to you. We have some very dear friends uh, over in the UK and one of those is involved with an insurance, with the government insurance, and they had a slight little problem with a, a small tumor and uh, the doctor diagnosed it and the they only have to wait 18 months to find the surgeon to take it out. That's how long the waiting list is to find a, a surgeon to remove a, a basal cell carcinoma. Uh, by that time, the person had been buried by about six, uh, by six or seven months. So that something's wrong with this stuff with uh, the governments running the, uh, the health care system, for God's sake. I mean, look what they did to the post office. But that's the last time I'm going to stand on my soapbox today. And we want to move on to the next one that we want to be talking about, which is uh, going to be the uh, hold on. I've got it up here. Please don't leave me. Oh, it's the Elliott Wave. This is what we've got to talk about. Let's get this up here and take a look at it. This is from the newest issue of the Elliott Wave letter. Boy, what is the matter with my computer today? Just give me a second here, and we'll get this thing put up here. All righty, there we go. 
you can see this is their their uh, bear market in bonds as you know we are very bearish bonds and all i wanted to do was to just show you uh, this is what Al you know this is how elliot wave you notice the difference the three four fives and the ones and the twos and the little small patterns and the other things that are there uh, you know pretty folks what i do is pretty much the same thing only i look at it a little bit differently and that's the you know that's really the bottom line i wanted to hopefully get this up here so we can take a look at it together because i think it would uh you know because i i have nothing against elliott wave i just have a hard time counting those little waves and uh, i know i have this uh long term uh oh where is my long term uh oh shut the front door and raise the rent i got it here somewhere where i spent a lot of time on this last night to get it right and boy oh boy the, the trading gods are against me today. Well, I'm going to have to do it at the at the next break is what I'm – ah, maybe – no, that's not it. I don't think it is anyway. No, that's not it either. Anyway, we'll see if that's going to be the case. But uh, I'll post that uh, long-term chart on the bonds uh, uh, in just a minute because that will show you the difference. Ah, let's just do it right now because they ought to be able to do something correctly here. Hold on a second here. Let me get my, my treasury bond chart up uh, and, and I, I, you know, I have nothing, you know, I don't have anything against, I just don't understand those wave counts. That's the bottom line of what I'm looking at. So, uh, you know, that that's neither, neither here nor there. Let's take a quick look here. There we go. We're going to get it in here. We'll be able to see it. Hopefully we've got the head and shoulders pattern in, but it's beginning to look like it's ready to uh, go down. Here we are. Now here, you'll notice with what we're doing, you don't see any one threes or fives. All you're seeing are those little triangles. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at a potential head and shoulders pattern. Uh, it's had a pretty good rally. It rallied up exactly to the 61% retracement. And now it's trying to make a 50% retracement up there at that 148. Now that's it's almost two handles away, folks. So it only might have made the only 50% retracement level at that 147.06 at 147.26. So that's that possibility. Now, any move below uh, that 145 level will certainly negate this head and shoulders pattern. In other words, then it'll resume its bearishness uh, to the downside because after we made that shoulder back there in March 4th, and we had a really strong move. Uh, market went from 143 up to 157 handles, up to the exact 61% retracement, and then gave it back, and now it's not even bouncing. So that's not a very bullish scenario for bonds. Uh, that's what it looks like. But I just wanted to let you know that I am a, uh, I like the idea of Elliott Wave. It's just that I don't understand the counting. And uh, I have had in my office in Pismo Beach, California, some of the best Elliott people in the world, and including Bryce Gilmore, who I think is the very best. Bob, Moore, Bob Miner was there. Uh, Tony Plummer. I mean, there's just a lot of guys that when they sit there and they try to dissect every single wave, and it's not that hard. If you just go back and look what's happened in the past and try to move it into the future, that's about as close as you're going to get because we don't know what the future is. So those are the things that I look at. I don't know if it means a whole lot or anything, but uh, let's go on and we'll move on to uh, something else here. And uh, hopefully that helps you decide what I look like with the Elliott Wave Analysis. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Call from Mr. Z in Philadelphia. John, how are you doing this morning? I am very well, Mr. Pesavento. Um, thanks for taking the call. It's no problem, and you can call me Larry after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> so, what can uh, I do Larry, for you? Uh, yesterday, you identified, uh, to start off the week, a beautiful pattern that attracted your attention, and that was the rally in the uh, NASDAQ futures, uh, both on the weekly and the daily basis, with the idea that shorting somewhere around the uh, 78.60 level was a very low risk trade, whether it worked or not. Well, uh, it started to work, driven largely by the uh, 4 p.m. decline in the price of Google shares. And I would like to ask you, now that uh, the NASDAQ futures are at 77.90, maybe 70 points or 1% lower than that level uh, was at yesterday when you were doing your show, please describe how you would handle a uh, trade position, uh, both uh, position swing shorts and scalping short. Uh, I'd like to just hear your thought process on that kind of thing. Sure, John. I'd be happy to do that. In fact, I was just, I posted the chart of the uh, NASDAQ weekly that we were looking at. We also put the daily chart into the newsletter to let the folks uh, see what we were watching. But uh, the main thing is, you know, uh, some people said that you know, it was all about Google. Well, you know, that that NASDAQ is all about 25 stocks anyway, and Google happens to be one of the big ones. And then Amazon caught a cold also. So it's a question of whether they're going to bounce uh, uh, very much from this level or not. We'll have to wait and see. Now, I had a really nice chart that I was going to talk about. And I don't know what it is with my charts this morning. I've had lots of computer problems over these last uh, two or three days. My video thing broke. I finally got it fixed, and now I can't get these charts to line up the way I wanted them. But what I'm going to do, John, since we've got a good segment here, I'm going to pull it up again because I know I just did it. And if I can just give me a second here, we'll be able to pull it up, and you'll see what I'm looking at. Now, whether that's the right thing to do or not,
I don't know, but there it is. Let me get it up here. It'll only take a second to get it in so the folks can look at it because uh, <laughs> it, we, here we go. We'll continue yeah. talking until Yeah, let's continue uh, talking. The oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, it should come up. appear in Tiger TV. Well, I'll and, tell you. Uh, well, anyway, Larry, how is the weather in Tucson? <laughs> it's going to be beautiful today, 80 degrees, and um, the uh, what we call the, uh, the the Palo Verde trees, the ones that attack all the allergies, are certainly uh, they're attacking this old cowboy today for sure. Boy, John, I don't know what's wrong with my computer today, but I just re I just reinstated it, and I still don't find it. I just uh, there must be. Uh, they must be the, the trading gods must be against me today because I can't I can't find the darn thing and I uh, all right I'm going to do one other thing and then we're going to, ah I found it JJ hold on just a minute John we got it here we go there there are here we go let's take a look here here's what we like yesterday where was that 7860 was the long term number we were looking at uh, it, it was it was 7843 Sunday night rallied up as you can see there on Sunday night and then it had the big break. You notice that the big down move in Google stopped exactly at the, this is a, the NASDAQ, but stopped exactly at the 78% level at 78.70. And then last night, it rallied all the way up to the 382 retracement at 78.12. We're trading around, last time I heard, it was around 77.80, somewhere in that ballpark. If we go start going below 77.70 today, you're going to be looking at a 76 handle on this relatively quickly because this could be a major top because of that five-point reverse wave pattern that was there on the weekly and on the daily. I don't know if it's going to – it's already started to work. I mean, we could, you know, rally back and make new highs today, of course. But right now, the, the two factors to look at are the low from overnight, which was 77.77. We break below that. You're looking at a handle that's going to be 7680 or something like that, and if we get above the 382, which is at 7814, that would tell us that yes, we're probably getting ready to have some more of a rally. But that's what it looks like right now. Now the rest of the market is actually quite normal, but this is uh, this is not unusual because it's only been one stock that scared people. Remember, you know, Facebook dropped a hundred dollars a share, you know, back in the early months of uh, this year, and then came back strong. So, uh, you know, you've got to look at each of these indices separately, and the one that looked the most vulnerable was the Nasdaq, so far. Right, right. So no, that's uh, what I'm looking at. And uh, just so your listeners are clear, uh, of the three largest market cap companies in the Nasdaq 100, Apple is one. They report earnings tonight. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, uh, I'll just make an observation. Uh, take Microsoft, Google, and Apple. Uh, all three of those names have been in strong rally mode ever since uh, December. Upon earnings release, uh, Microsoft last Wednesday night, in fact, extended fairly sizably its rally. Then Google last night reversed its rally to an extent. And of course now uh, we await four o'clock to see what happens to Apple and that, my guess would be uh, uh, if it gaps up or down, it would take that NASDAQ 100 with it. So, uh, so just so we all understand what we're dealing with at least the next eight hours. But uh, Larry, uh, going through that thought process, looking at that uh, pattern with the FIB numbers, that is so helpful, I appreciate that. I might ask, um, uh, and I guess we're going to go into a break, but I wanted to ask if you could pull up on your shorter-term charts as well the July silver contract. Uh, sure. This, this, uh, this uh, commodity futures continually gets hammered. We have not yet broken decisively 1480 to 1475, but nor have we been able to sustain any rally. I'm curious uh, to see if any of your chart patterns suggest something might be changing on that score. Well, John, we've been in a trading range for a month, you know, from 1520 or 1515 down to uh, 1477. And what we're doing right now this morning is we're just doing nothing more than testing that 78% level. Uh, exactly. That's where it's trading at right now. Let's just pop this up here so the folks can take a quick look at it. But, uh, 
We're trading at 1486. We've had a big break. Well, you know, 15 cents in silver is now a pretty big break. But last night's overnight high was exactly 61% from the high that was made on Friday. So until we get above that 1515 level, uh, this has a, a negative bias. On the downside, John, there is a possibility here that we could make a, uh, a third drive down there at that uh, 1450 level. Remember, let's just do the daily on this because I think you'll be able to uh, to see it real clearly because the uh, just it's just right here. I know it is. Just a second. We'll get it up here. You'll see this 1440 announced. That's what I'm looking at. Now we're only 46 cents away in silver, and if we get there, to me that would really be a good place to take a look at the long side of silver. That means that maybe the gold could get down to possibly test that, uh, you know, 1270 level again. We'll have to just wait and see. But right now they still look okay to me. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with the long side of these. Very good. Thank you. Hey, thanks for calling in. John, I appreciate it, my friend. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're back, and uh, we're talking about the silver market. I posted the uh, the AI, the artificial intelligence forecast today uh, for silver. It says there could be a bottom here in about a half an hour, whether that's going to be the case or not. Uh, I don't know, but keep an eye on that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yesterday, of course, we were watching one particular market with a great deal of interest, and that was the NASDAQ. I'll just give you an idea of what it was doing here going into the uh, – 
close here in the NASDAQ. And you'll see that's what we were watching. And of course, what happened uh, was uh, something a little bit of a surprise to many people, but it did move down. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, folks. It's just like the restaurant business. Sometimes the pizza is pretty good, sometimes it's not. So just remember, it's all about taking responsibility for yourself and making sure that you're looking at the right things when you want to do it. Folks, the euro is having a maximum rally here that we've been waiting for. Let's just get this up here and take a look at it. Uh, we had that low down there at 111. Uh, we've rallied up to 112.25. Uh, that was a 61% retracement of that previous high that we have here. Any move above this 112.60 level in the euro would say that the bottom in this euro might be a little more substantial than some people are thinking about. Uh, remember, there were three numbers down there at that 111 area. We forecasted that last week. We highlighted it in the letter. You'll notice you had a 1.618 expansion, you had a 1.27 expansion, and you had another 1.618 expansion, making that three drive to a bottom very, very important in the euro. And that's why we think that is, uh, that's why it's going higher. Now, there's an example of the difference between what I'm looking at and what people that do Elliott Wave. Elliott Wave is, you know, they're taking these minute waves that I quite don't understand, but all we're trying to do is to go back in the past to see what happened and see if the formation that we're looking at, in this case, a three drive to a bottom pad, this happens to be a butterfly and a three drive, uh, is, is going to work. And we, we don't know whether it's going to work or not, but nobody else does either. That's the whole key to this. Nobody knows the future. That's the main thing that we're looking at as we're watching some of these things unfold. Another question that someone's asked is about the grain markets. Folks, I mentioned this yesterday. The thing that has bothered me about the grain markets is the fact that the collapse that we've had in the last two weeks has broken through major Fibonacci level. The only one that has held up and has held up well has been the corn market. Now, my game plan is because we have this uh, new moon coming up, which is uh, usually a very big one. And, of course, uh, we'll have our guest, Mr. Norm calls it to the minute Winsky will be on on Friday to uh, talk to us about that and I think I think it's I think Norman yeah he's going to be on the third because the uh, yeah he's going to be on the third of May that's right he'll be on Friday the third of May and the new moon is uh, I believe right after that so it's going to be interesting to see what we have that's what I'm looking at is uh, early next week if possible finding a bottom in some of these uh, grain markets uh, particularly we're looking at uh, wheat, uh, wheat and uh, corn let's just uh, double check the corn here because we've had a really really interesting move in corn and with the collapse of the other things yesterday, the corn market actually held up extremely well. Uh, and so we'll see if it's going to hold this level of 372 in December corn. Now, we're still getting a lot of uh, moisture across the Midwest. That's preventing the corn from going in. And, you know, anything can happen. We've had four years of four or five years of really great um, crops like we've never had before. And now they're saying there might never be a crop failure. Whenever you hear something like that, uh, you, you want to get ready for it. So that's another one that's good. Here's another one, folks, that has a real interesting one uh, from the commodities perspective that we're really keeping a close eye on because it moves so dramatically. And that's the natural gas. We went down and we took out the, all the lows of uh, 2017, 2018, and the one in January of 2019 and then we immediately snap back above that that that's a very important that's one of john hill's what's he called the up thrust reversal in other words when the market goes right down into the sewer the next thing you know it's up on the street again so that's uh that's a very interesting one in natural gas it's going to take natural gas uh, a move above a 272 to possibly make it look like it wants to go higher, but that's uh, what we're looking at uh, neither here nor there. Now let's take a look at a couple things that we've been talking about that are actually working really good today. Um, and we'll see here that the British pound, we, we talked about the strong support, at that 129 level. Um, that was the buy. Uh, it went against you if you were in it about a hundred dollar, about a dollar twenty, 120 bucks. And now it's uh, 600 to the plus. Uh, any move above this 3180 level, 
quite a ways from where we are right now would tell us that this ABCD pattern could be very powerful. Folks, the reason why this pattern was so very important, you can see the uh, the swings down and the Gartley patterns that we have marked there. Those are those gray triangles. <coughs> As you can see, those all coming in at 129. But look, folks, that was from that was from March the 11th all the way in to the 26th. That was a five-week down move that it took to do that. That took a great deal of selling to get it way down there, and now it's starting to pop its head up, uh, which tells us that maybe that selling is over and it's ready to go higher. You know, that's really uh, you know what we're going to uh, be looking at. But right now, it's it's starting to work. Whether it's going to continue or not, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But those are the kinds that you like to see where you've got time and price together so that you're able to determine whether these are going to go higher or go lower. Those are the, the whole things that we're going to be watching. So let's uh, let's remember that. All right. Now, here's another one, folks, that someone's asked about, and that's the old airline company, Boeing. We'll take a look here. We'll see what we've got here. And you'll notice that... Uh, we got up to almost the 1.618 expansion, which would have been uh, 452. The high was 445. And then, of course, the big gap down when they had the uh, second crash of the airplane. And now we're in the possibility of looks like it's making a smaller ABCD up at this 404 level. Here we are trading at around 380 tonight. So that's going to be uh, another interesting one to do. This Boeing chart is a really beautiful technical picture, folks, going back to last January. If you'll notice the three drive to a top there. The market came down, made a double top, and then came up and made a triple top up at that uh, 390. And then from October into December 26th, it went from 390 all the way down to 290, dropped $100 a share, made a three drive to a bottom pattern, and then off to the races. So this is a very heavily traded, really good uh, trading vehicle stock. Uh, in my opinion, because it's got all the things necessary. You've got great liquidity, follows the patterns quite nicely. In fact, any chart, that any, any stock that's getting more than 100,000 shares uh, trading uh, a day will, will have these characteristics. Smaller, smaller stocks, uh, penny stocks, it does work, but it, it can get aberrations because of the fact that that lack of liquidity can be a problem. We stay away from those because you don't really need it with all the things that you have out here to trade, you know, as, as you see it. I mean, there's just so many of them that you don't have to, uh, you don't have to, uh, to worry about that. So let's keep in mind that uh, it's all about risk control, folks. It's not about anything else. Those are the main things that you want to uh, keep in mind. I wanted to bring one other chart about Microsoft up, and we'll talk about that after we pay a few bills. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of Microsoft. It's the weekly, and even with the bullishness yesterday, we did not break above that 1.618 expansion. I think that is uh, relatively important. That's uh, you know what I'm, at least I'm watching. So let's keep a uh, keep an eye out on that one. So here's one that uh, could be ready. Let's uh, move over and talk just a little. By the way, the Nasdaq went down and touched yesterday's low by about one tick, went below it by just a tick or two, and then rallied 40 points. So uh, a lot of volatility over there. That's the pork bellies of the stock index futures, folks. It moves around a great deal. Let's take a switch gears here. Since we're talking about automobiles, switch gears. We'll get into the uh, crude oil. Uh, I wanted to mention to you um, the 61% retracement on this crude comes in at uh, 64.90. Uh, we've been as high as uh, 64.70. Uh, we backed off a little bit from that level, but the key here is if you look at the topping formation that we had between the 23rd, 24th, and 25th of April, that was a perfect uh, 135 pattern. You can see the retracements up there. The one three, the three and the five were equal. Uh, Perfect 78% level uh, retracements, and then uh, down she went. And now we're making this rally back to see if this uh, 6490 level is going to uh, be some type of resistance. We've rallied a little better than $2.40 per barrel in a matter of four days. So uh, it getting it's probably a tiny bit overbought in here, but it hasn't reached that critical level of 64.90 that we're watching in the crude oil. Now, we, we're trying to wait for numbers that are as nearly perfect as we can find. Unfortunately, we don't always get that, but uh, the, those are some of the things that we factor in uh, looking at some of these things. One other thing that we wanted to mention to you, if you remember, we had one of our uh, folks from uh, the UK talk about the head and shoulders pattern that we were seeing in the Dow Jones uh, at the same time that we were looking at that uh, five-point reverse wave in the NASDAQ and that head and shoulders pattern in the NASDAQ uh, yielded some down, downward move, but nothing like what the NASDAQ, because the NASDAQ was basically, you looked at two stocks, Amazon and Google, particularly Google, that's what sent the market, you know, spiraling uh, a whole lot lower. So those are, you know, those are factors that you want to pay attention to, I think, when you're trading some of these uh, different markets. So, okay, let's get on to one here that is really uh, ready, folks. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but uh, this is one of Mr. Z's favorites. Uh, this is the August live cattle. Uh, you can see here that we are setting at the proverbial 61% retracement line uh, going back from all, last August. Uh, you'll notice the last three days there, uh, you'll see uh, you've got two little dojis in here. So this market is really ready to rally. Now, the only caveat here is the fact that look at that down move that we had over the last seven days, folks. We dropped from 119 to 112. That's seven handles in cows. That's a lot of money. 
that's uh, about almost four thousand bucks, and uh, that's uh, that's a big deal. So it, you got to be careful here because it could have a lot more to go to the downside, but it also could be a major bottom. Well, that really tells us a whole lot, Larry. Well, you've got to decide which way you're going to trade it. Now, the, the caveats here is the fact you have this big down move. But now for three days, you got Monday, uh, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, you're, you're actually holding at this level of 112. Well, it would hardly be uh, understandable that it got below 112 by just a little bit. But then if it went back above 112, that would tell you that the stops that were there have been executed and it's got less of a chance to break. So the game plan here is to see if it can hold this 112 level. And if it goes below it, because you're down eight or nine days in a row, you're very oversold. You don't want to chase it to the downside. What you want to do is to try to find a reversal point. And that reversal point would be at 111.10. So you're risking around, if you're getting ready to see cattle turn from here, whether you buy them right here or wait to see if they hold 112, you're only going to have to risk $400. So you can get yourself a nice herd of cattle, about 30 head, and you'd be able to be in the cattle business. And you don't have to worry about feeding them or cleaning up them up or disease or anything like that. So that's the advantage of having a contract uh, for futures. So keep an eye on the cattle. We'll follow this through because it's a really nice pattern. It has the danger signs that are there. These big, wide-ranging bars down, that's a great deal of selling. And believe me, folks, this is how markets act, whether it's the NASDAQ, the S&P, Russell Banking Index, they they stay there, and all of a sudden, when they start to turn down, bada bing, bada boom. And the reason they do that is fear is a greater emotion than greed, folks, because fear has physical characteristics that we've talked about. Dilated pupils, diaphoresis, or sweating, you know, chalky white lips. As you look in the mirror today, you're seeing all of these things, Larry. The one thing I don't have in these markets, folks, is fear. I've been around these darn things so darn long, nothing scares me anymore. Uh, I'm startled a lot, but uh, being scared goes back to the days when uh, 2000, uh, 1987, when we didn't know whether we were going to get our money out of the market. That's those are the things that scare me. The re you know the rest. Uh, that's uh, those things just give me a little bit of trouble. That's one of the things I have problems with this Bitcoin stuff because. Uh, you know, who knows what this hacking stuff could lead to. Folks, do you ever stop and think where we're going to be with telephones 10 years down the road? Who would ever have thought where we are now that telephones, uh, you carry a little TV with you in your pocket. Not, mine's not that way, of course, but, uh, you know, it's everything. You, you, just, you could order anything, buy anything, do anything, order anything, plan a trip, whatever. You know, you've got uh, you got a whole bunch, a whole bunch of things looking at, so... I don't know. Looks like old George Earl. Well, 1984 might be right. That's for sure. <laughs> well, in 1987, no, no, actually, that peak I never bothered me. I was actually in good shape 1987 because uh, I had been short and uh, I had made some really good money and I was not complaining at all. My biggest mistake, peak. It's good to bring this up. Uh, in 1987. Uh, when the market was down big, 500 points in the Dow, which was 16% in one day, uh, the Treasury bonds were only down about eight ticks. And I was long Treasury bonds, and I was so afraid that I was not going to be able to get the money out of the commodity firm. I was trading a Stotler at the time, and uh, I decided to get out of my long bonds. That that was the dumbest thing I did. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> but they went up for 11 days, and three of them were limits. I mean, my God, they went just they just went screaming. And of course, the bottom was in in the uh, the interest rate market. They bottomed in '82, and uh, you know they topped sometime in 2016. But that's the that's uh, that was it. Yes, I remember the Goldberg Haymeyer days. That was uh, you betcha. I certainly remember that. Uh, let's uh, let's take a quick look here at one other. Oh my goodness, we got another break coming up here. The final one. Let's take a look at platinum here because I think this platinum has a chance. Uh, or some pretty good move here. Now the question about platinum is whether we're going to come down and test that 880 level one more time. If you'll notice, we've tested it once in mid-April, 
came back again last week on uh, Thursday and did it. And uh, But if we can stay, test it one more time at 880 and then turn, that would be a two-week down move in a bull market with an ABCD. Uh, and boy, it could be off to the races. So uh, keep a close eye on this platinum. That's, uh, that's one our good friend Jim Flanagan of GAN Educators over in Santa Monica, California. That's his lead dog. He, he's really bullish platinum. So... We'll see if that happens. 877-927-664E. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about one of our favorite people here at the TFNN. Uh, Princess Maria uh, mentioned that one of these days the market's going to gap down and never look back. Well, it uh, it that might happen, but um, that's not what the, usually it, how it occurs. If you want to have some history about that, go back and read somebody like Bernard Baruch, one of the great speculators from the 1920s, 30s and stuff. And he wrote a book called My Own Story, which was autobiography. And he said that the greatest scam in all of technical or all of, of the stock market is to inflate something to a high price and suckers will buy it all the way down, i.e. Bitcoin, WorldCom, you know, all these others, Enron, whatever. So that's what happens. They'll give you plenty of chances 
uh, both up and down. I know what you meant, Marie. I just wanted to, to let the folks know that there's not been a case that I've looked at, and that's been several hundred years of looking at charts, where the market topped and then all of a sudden gapped down big and it was all over. It gives you all kinds of chances uh, all on the way down. Believe me, it certainly does. We've seen it in, well, just so many of them. So it does happen that way that you get a gap down to start it. But uh, look at look at Facebook, folks. It dropped a hundred dollars a share, and then rallied back to exactly the 78 percent level at a 195, and didn't take it out as of yet. So. Those are just some of the things that we're keeping an eye on, so I don't know, but that's what we're watching. Keep an eye on this euro today, folks, at this uh, 120, 112.30 level. That's a very, very important number, Fibonacci-wise. Whether that'll mean much or not, who knows, but it's just something that we want to keep, uh, on the, keep on the burner to look at it. Sarah says hi to you, Maria. Anyway, let's... Uh, Let's move on to the next one here that we want to cover. Remember, folks, uh, the key in these Treasury bonds is that 146 level. We get below that 146, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be really nasty for interest rates. That's the way it looks like. I, That's my two cents worth, so we'll see. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.